Well, good morning and happy Tuesday again to you. Well, it's a beautiful morning. It's a little, it's a really nice here in Pennsylvania. Actually, it's absolutely perfect weather. Fall is here. It's nice, cooler, and crisp, and it is just a good day today. Well, today we're going to be talking about scars in the Bible and in our lives. But before we do that, we're going to ask the Lord's blessing on our time here together. So let's pray this morning. Father in heaven, thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for this time that we can open up your word, that we can find encouragement, we can find hope, and we can uh, invite you to continually transform our lives. I ask that you would be the guiding and directing force here today, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is going to be sort of more of a devotional than a Bible study this morning. And uh, it's good to have just encouraging moments uh, at times. Well, we're into fall now, and the first week or so of fall has just been absolutely beautiful. But I wanted to research and learn why leaves actually fall off the trees. We're in fall, so let's talk about leaves falling. And evidently, when the leaves are, are ready to fall... They produce an extra cell structure where the, where the stem of the leaf contacts the tree and it, it actually severs the, the leaf away. But at the same time, the tree is also sealing itself. So then when the leaf falls away, every time a leaf falls off of a tree, it leaves a scar on the tree. Now, why do the leaves fall uh, in the first place? And uh, winter's coming, the leaves begin to, there's not, not as much uh, moisture, it seems. So the tree does this to survive. Would it not shed the leaves, it would, it would surely die. Now, of course, not all trees shed their leaves. Uh, pine trees have a special wax coating on their needles, and they're able to survive the whole winter like that. But most trees, uh, oak and maple and that sort of thing, they, they wouldn't be able to withstand the punishing cold temperature, the blistering winds uh, from, from the winter. So in order to survive, the tree has to let go of some of itself. And when it does this, it leaves scars. You know, sometimes in life, God will ask us to let go of something of ourselves. And sometimes those things, those, those events can leave scars. But God ultimately wants sin to fall off of us so that we can survive. Well, you may have heard that uh, we recently had some interesting news for our television show, Behold the Savior. Just this past Friday, I got word that the television station that we were airing on was going to be closing the very next day. Apparently, they've known for a couple weeks, but they were under a gag order that they couldn't uh, tell anybody. I found out through a newspaper article that someone sent me. So I called them up and I said, uh, hey, what's taking place? I hope, hope this is fake news. And they said, no, we're, we have to shut down. They got bought out by the government. Evidently, the government's buying up uh, airtime so they can make room for cell data and that sort of thing. So they, they shut down. Every single employee there lost their job and were not continued to another, uh, another area. So just 12 hours after they shut down, we began airing our series on the Revelation, jumping right into the heart of Revelation. We've invested a lot of time, a lot of effort into this series, and I was, I was actually stunned by this news. And the whole world was going to have an opportunity to gain a deeper insight. And it, it sort of leaves a scar when you hear the unexpected news like that. But thankfully, you're still able to watch this series because we're still on Facebook and YouTube and, and uh, we still have the website, BeholdTheSavior.com. So you want to check with that. By the way, if you're just now tuning in, we're thankful that you are. And don't forget to like and share and, and, and subscribe. But you know, we get these news and we can be stunned by it. It can be, leave a scar. And before we go on with the scars, I want to tell you about how I came into ministry. I was speaking with my dad years ago, and I said, Dad, I just I really feel that God's calling me into ministry, but I, you know, I don't have the education, don't have you know, what, what they say it takes. And he said, well, are you going to boo-hoo about it, or are you going to do something about it? So that was that, that encouragement I need. That was that push that I needed to really begin moving in the direction of getting into ministry. 
And lo and behold, here we are and we're able to reach the world with the message of the gospel because of that one encouragement. And we see this as the TV show being um, temporarily off air because the station shut down. This is that time where we can either boohoo about it or we can uh, reorganize and push forward and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're looking for all sorts of areas that we can uh, that we can share this information with now. But let's take a look into the Bible as we're talking about scars today. Turn to Zechariah chapter 13 verse 6. Zechariah 13 6. This is a, a prophecy uh, or a vision of heaven. It says, and one will say to him, talking about Jesus, what are these wounds in between your arms or your hands? What are these wounds in your hands? Then he will answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. So evidently, this tells us that there will be people in heaven who have never heard the gospel. They have Maybe they're in some remote area of the world or something, never had the opportunity to learn about Jesus. They'll be in heaven. They'll get to hear the gospel from Jesus himself for the very first time. And not only that, they've had the Holy Spirit working with them. God hasn't totally abandoned his people. He's allowed the Holy Spirit to go where his people cannot. So the only scars that will be in heaven, the only remnants of sin will be the scars that of when Jesus was crucified. The only reminders of sin will be what Jesus did to destroy sin in, 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 its, in its fullest. Scars can be reminders for us. You know, one time I sat down and I counted all the scars on my hands at one point, came up with 92 scars. I was a very reckless child and some of the scars I could remember and some of them I just couldn't for the life of me. Scars can serve as reminders, you know, of some, uh, of some learning experience, some accident, some foolishness, like most of us guys do. Or it can be a reminder of some surgery, some, some accident. Now, God could have made us our bodies to heal without scars, couldn't he? He, he could have designed it so we healed ac- absolutely perfectly. But he allowed these scars to be reminders. You know, we may have gone something through something in our past, where it leaves the remnants of it, but use those scars as reminders that, hey, God is still in control. Maybe this scar was from a mistake. I don't have to make that same mistake anymore. The scar is a reminder, and we continue to push forward. Well, speaking of scars, you I'm sure you've heard about the shooting that took place in Las Vegas this past weekend. Absolute horrible tragedy. And there's going to be a lot of scars through that. There's going to be a lot of wounds. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of destroyed lives through that. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus addressed this sort of thing. Matthew chapter 24. And let's look at verse, verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And we, we expect to, unfortunately, we expect to see more scenarios like this. We, we expect to see more unthinkable things because the Holy Spirit is actually being withdrawn from, from planet Earth. Why? Not because Jesus doesn't want to reach us, but because he's been rejected to so much. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 says, And because lawlessness will abound, remember, lawlessness, because so many are in open, blatant violation of the law of God, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So somebody in their right mind does not bring 10, 15 guns to a place and open up and shoot so many people. I think the last count was 515 injured and something like 50 or 55 killed. But there's a way that we can react with this, with absolute utter disgust is appropriate. Praying for those that were affected by this is appropriate. But one one way that Jesus would not want us to react is with violence. When Jesus was coming, was going to be arrested, the night of the Last Supper, the soldiers came, he came to be arrested. One of his servants pulled out a sword and he was going to defend. He was going to react with violence. And Jesus said, look, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. A way to react is not with violence. A way to react 
is with love. Now, what about the policemen and those that were there to put an end to it? Yes, carry those guns, go protect the people. We're thankful for it. But in reaction to this, you know, there may be some political backlash and other things. The way to react is not with violence. There's going to be scars, but I guarantee you, according to the Bible, every single scar will be healed after Jesus comes back. Every single scar except his. Why? To serve as a reminder that we would never experience something like this again. We would never choose to experience it. Go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel, no, Ezekiel chapter 47, rather. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12. And you think about this, if all the trees, when they lose their leaves, when they shed a piece of self, when they let go to survive, it leaves a scar, and there will be no scars in heaven except for the scars on Jesus, will the leaves that break off for food in heaven have a scar? It's an interesting point, isn't it? Will leaves even fall in heaven? Uh, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12. Ezekiel's given a picture of heaven here. Along the bank of the river on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. Leaves will not wither. And you know, you look out and see the beautiful fall foliage with the, the oranges, the purples, the yellows. It looks beautiful, but it's a result of sin. The leaves are dying. <laughs> they have to be killed to, for the tree to be able to survive. That's not going to happen in heaven. But even through that beauty, God, through the result of sin, God still speaks. He gives us those beautiful colors. But in heaven, the, fleas will, the, the leaves will not wither, and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Now notice that. Where are the, where's the water coming from that's feeding these trees? It's coming from the sanctuary. Why is it coming from the sanctuary? Because there's a sanctuary in heaven. The earthly sanctuary on earth was only a scale model of the actual sanctuary in heaven. Now to find out where that's coming from, you need to go to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, it's basically a parallel section here. It says, and he showed me, now this is John in vision, the Apostle John in vision. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So this water is absolutely pure that feeds this tree of life and it's coming from the sanctuary. Jesus is in that sanctuary on the throne. And you may remember when Jesus was crucified, the, the soldiers shoved the spear in his side, and there were two distinct streams that came out of Jesus, a stream of blood and a stream of water. The blood symbolizing, obviously, the sacrifice of his death for sin, for us, and the water symbolizing the life that his sacrifice would offer. That's coming straight from the throne of God, that water of life says, in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So evidently, leaves are still going to be coming off the tree. Just this past week, and I was on a nice get-together, and we were get gathering together for an evening worship right under a nice, beautiful tree. And I said, wouldn't it be great if we'd all be gathered under the tree of life like this in heaven? But it says the, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Does this mean that there's still going to be some, uh, some fighting, some sickness that's taking place? No. Healing takes place in different ways. Healing can take place over spending time together and eating together. And the leaves will, will be part of the food in heaven also. So... All, every remnant of sin will be gone, and these leaves will be plucked to nourish the saved that are in heaven. They will not fall as a result of sin. Now, maybe you have scars in your life. Heal those scars now. If you've got a beef with somebody else, if somebody's hurt you, don't let it continue to hurt you. Go and take care of that. Don't, don't allow these scars to be, you know, we could focus on the scars or we could focus on the healing. This is the time where we need to focus on the healing, just like these people that were infected by the shooting in Las Vegas. 
In fact, why don't we take time and pray together and ask God to work through those scars in our life. Father in heaven, thank you for the way that you've designed our bodies to heal. We thank you for the beautiful colors you've given us in fall. And even that is as beautiful as the result of sin. So God, we ask that you would forgive us where we have hurt others, where we have hurt ourselves, where we have hurt you physically, emotionally, where we've just done wrong, where we've violated your law. God, we don't want to be called into that Matthew 24 where lawlessness would abound because the love of many wax cold. And we, we ask that you would grow our hearts. We ask that you would uh, unite our families, give us opportunities to share the world about the love that you offer. And we thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, be sure to like and share what you're learning on social media. Visit and like us on Facebook. Visit and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And visit and subscribe to the website at BeholdTheSavior.com. Also, don't forget, we are in the middle of a series of revelation that's airing on the website, on Facebook, and on YouTube Sunday at 1230 on the internet. Do not miss it. This week, we're going to be addressing the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We're going to see the development of the Christian church and the birth of the Protestant Reformation. You will not miss it. I guarantee you it will be eye-opening, new, but biblical information. I hope to see you there. Thank you, and God bless. 2,000 years ago, God gave the Apostle John a prophecy a prophecy that would span all the way down to today. John recorded his prophecy in the Revelation. He tells us of a beast that would rise from the water, a beast that would command worship, a beast that would have a mark. Those who refuse this mark will be killed. John tells us of four horses that would gallop through history, leading us to discover who this beast is. Contrary to the commandments of God, the beast will cause the desolation of temple worship, a worship system that will become corrupt by abominations. But what causes this abomination of desolation? What does this mean for God's people? Has hope been lost? The revelation of Jesus Christ will give you the answers you are seeking. Revelation, Sundays in October on Behold the Savior. Who will win the great battle between good and evil? The Antichrist or Jesus Christ?